Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. Perfect afternoon for baseball here at the Big A. The homestand continues. The uh, Angels continue to play very good baseball. They've won seven straight in this afternoon. They go for the series sweep over the visiting Minnesota Twins. Hi, everybody. From inside the Big A, we welcome you back to Angels Baseball here on Fox Sports West along with Mark Gubiza. I'm Victor Rojas. And I mentioned that the Angels continue to play very good baseball on this homestand. They're swinging the bats well, and uh, the pitching continues to step up. Everything they've done well. They've defended well with the glove, and they pitched well, and they've hit well, and been unbelievable so far as we take a look at what they've done so far on this homestand as far as swinging the bats. I mentioned how much they've scored. 34 to 6, they've outscored their opponents. What you see, the batting average with runners in scoring position. What an improvement from the last time the Angels were at home. Nearly 400, 378. Big flies at 11, and the pitching staff, the entire team ERA in this homestand, at exactly one. So when you pitch that well and hit the home run like that and defend, you got a good chance to have a great homestand so far. It's been Fantastic. And not only that, Garrett Richards on the mound for the Angels. Last time out, he threw the ball very, very well. Oh, dominant stuff. Take a look at our AT&T U versus Rewind. He had it. Electric fastball, 97, 98 mile an hour fastball, an unhittable slider. And his command was very good. His comfort zone on the mound, very, very good. Those shoulders were squared up to the plate. He was consistently getting ahead of the count and finished off a very good lineup with relative ease. Went out there at six punch shots, nine shut innings, his two hits allowed for Garrett Richards. See if the Angels can keep it rolling, looking to make it eight in a row as we continue the homestand. Sit back and relax. We're going to bring you the lineups to the first pitch when we return. Angels baseball is brought to you by CarMax. Start to search for your next car at CarMax. CarMax, start here. By Jack in the Box. Get the new steak and egg breakfast burrito. It's not your basic breakfast burrito, and it's only at Jack in the Box. And by your Southern California Toyota dealers.
Set against the Minnesota Twins. The Angels took game one on Tuesday night, a shutout victory, 7 0. Last night it was 5 2. C.J. Wilson picked up the win last night, his eighth of the season, while Houston Street closed things down, picked up his 300th career save. The Angels did make a roster move today. David Freeze placed on the 15-day disabled list with the uh, a broken bone in his uh, right, or, yeah, right middle finger. That happened, of course, last night. The hit by a pitch similar to the injury that he suffered last May, in which he spent about three weeks on the disabled list. Kyle Kibitza recalled today from AAA Salt Lake. He had been playing some outfield, left field to be exact, uh, over the last several games with Caleb Coward playing third base for the Bees. But uh, Kyle is up. He's got some experience at the Major League level this year with the Angels. Not in the lineup today. Taylor Featherston gets to start over at third base, but at least uh, the Angels have some coverage at third base. And they also have a left-handed bat off the bench. And he's got good gap-type power and a strong throwing arm himself from third base. So you, you look for some... Some guys going to just do their job until David Freeze gets back in there. It looks like maybe Mike Sosha said today that maybe, you know, that 15-day DL, and then he'll be ready to go from that point. A warm afternoon, and uh, folks and uh, kids still streaming into the ballpark here. A lot of groups upstairs in the upper tank here at the Big A. The Angels uh, playing their 95th game of the season. Let's take, today. A, let's take a look at our Kia as we look at what the club has done with the guys leading off, and especially when you look at Giovatella and what he has done. The club is 21-5 and five with Johnny Giovatella leading off. Cole Calhoun with a solid record, 16-12. Eric Ibar when he was in that position, seven games under 500. So Johnny Giovatella has done a nice job getting on base, and, of course, what we've seen, what he always seems to come through, with those clutch hits late in the game. One of those uh, things, that when you look at those numbers there, too, it's, uh, it also has coincided with the fact that uh, the rest of the lineup is actually produced, aside from Trout and Pujols. Not only that, the ridiculous numbers that the Angels starting staff has put up over that stretch has certainly helped skew the numbers a little yes, bit in Johnny's it, favor. Yeah. You look at Johnny's numbers in particular, they don't stand out. They don't jump off the page. It just so happens that he's been in that leadoff spot. Uh, the way the lineup's been constructed while the Angels it's got red hot. It's all about being in the right position at the right time. That's all that matters. Yes. That is all that matters. Location, location, location. <laughs> Garrett Richards has taken the mound, and uh, he will get his warm-up pitches here. As uh, we take a look at Paul Molitor's starting lineup for the Minnesota Twins, they've lost four straight. And they are one and four on this current road trip. And uh, the struggles for them on the road continue. They're 19 and 28 away from target field. Aaron Hicks gets his first start in that leadoff spot of the season. He's the center fielder. Eduardo Nunez at second base. Joe Mauer first. Miguel Sano is the DH. Trevor Plouffe made the last out last night trying to bunt his way on is the third baseman. Eddie Rosario is in right field today. Shane Robinson in left. Kurt Suzuki behind the plate after night off. And it's Danny Santana batting ninth and playing shortstop. Garrett making his 19th start of the season. Uh, he is the uh, lone pitcher on this Angels staff at double digits in victories. He's 10 and 6 and has an ERA of 3.24. What did he throw the ball well his last time we just talked about that. For, for me, his go-to is what he has done overall this season at the Big A. He's had eight starts, his record 6 and 1 with a 1.89 ERA. Opponent's batting average against him under 180. The team overall 7 and 1 in those eight starts. So he's been very dominant here at the Big A day game here, especially with his cut fastball and slider. Keeps the ball down well. Should be a good form for an Angel win. Let's take a look at the defense for the Angels behind Garrett. And Matt Joyce to left, Mike Trout in center, Cole Calhoun in right, the infield. You mentioned Taylor Featherson at third base. Eric Ibar short, Johnny Giovatel at second. C.J. Crone at first, Albert serving as a D.H. today. Carlos Perez behind the plate. And Garrett's good buddy back out in center field and Mike Trout. Zero errors that's over 90 games. The only center fielder in Major League Baseball this season with zero errors in 90-plus games. Also, two outfield assists for Mike Trout. Halos with the win last night. Now 54 and 40 on the air, maintaining a two-game lead over the uh, Houston Astros, who also defeated the Boston Red Sox last night. They will play a little bit later on. Houston, of course, in the news today as they acquired uh, Scott Casimir. Local boy. He's from Houston, Sugarland area. From the Oakland Athletics. So a pretty decent one, too, with Dallas Keuchel and Scott Casimir now at the top end of that Astros rotation. First pitch today it is being delivered by the UPS store.
Hicks, the switch hitting center fielder, hitting 262 with three home runs and nine runs batted in. Very good speed. And, uh, tries to bunt his way on first pitch, and it's a strike. Hicks uh, kind of slid into the wall last night in the fifth inning. That was the triple that Giovatella hit over his head. It's kind of a last second uh, slamming of the brakes for him. Ended up uh, just kind of bending his knees up against that wall. No, uh, no effects of it. Not hurt. Stayed in the game and uh, back in that leadoff. But it, Brian Dozier getting the day off. This is hit sharply. One hopper to short. One down. Monday key for this game today for the Angels to be successful. Going with little Keith Richards. Wicked as it seems. That cut fastball at 97 and his swing and miss slider. Good over the hand curveball also. Richards has the most one of the most doming repertoire of pitches in the American League. They'll face Eduardo Nunez, the second baseman. Nunez was in the lineup uh, two nights ago, serving as a DH. Had a one for three game. Did not play last night. And the first one's in for a strike. Two eighty-eight hitter, a couple of home runs, eleven runs batted in. Ibar busy here early. Two outs. Just in case you're a little sluggish, Eric's awake now. No question. And the big thing when you look at Richards, always think about strikeouts. If he can get his strikeout, he's he's more of a ground ball pitcher, and it's a good sign right away, especially in the day game here at the Big A, keeping the ball on the ground and going to the guys who won a Gold Glove before at shortstop. So two outs and nobody on, and here's Joe Mauer. Mauer last night with a couple of hits, going two for five. Minnesota had nine hits last night in the loss. 277 batting average. Six home runs, 43 runs batted in. No Dozier, no Torrey Hunter this afternoon. At least at the start of the game. Now we're two for three in his career versus Garrett Richards. Two balls, one strike. Twins will head home and start a three game set against the Yankees beginning tomorrow night. Halos will stay here and start a three game series against the Texas Rangers. And on then, the corner, two and two. Rangers got into town last night. Yeah, it's so all the equipment yeah. being brought in when we were leaving last night. And we'll enjoy the off day here. Well, Minnesota, you mentioned, has the Yankees, and they have Pittsburgh, and then Seattle coming in. Tough stretch for the Twins. But they've been playing extremely well at home. Two, two to an hour. Bouncer over to second. The three ground ball outs to start the game for Garrett Richards. We'll head to the bottom of the first inning. It's Gia Vitella, Calhoun, and Trout coming up for the Angels.
Starting lineup for the Angels. Game number 95, as we mentioned. Giovatella in that leadoff spot playing second base. Cole Calhoun and right Mike Trout at center. Albert serving as a DH tonight. Eric Ibard short. CJ Cronin first bat choice back and left. Carlos Perez behind the plate. Taylor Featherston gets a start at third base. He will bat nine. They are taking on the former Angel, 32 year old right hander, native of the Dominican Republic. His name is Urban Santana. Yeah, Urban, we know him very, very well. Fastball, still a good fastball in 90 94. Very good slider. There was a lot of them. Occasional changeup. My go tos. Don't be over aggressive on that slider. He will throw that out of the strike zone, bring it in the zone. And then big fly magic. He's a guy that will give up the big fly. Four home runs already this year in under 20 innings pitched. First one from Urban is lined to right a base hit. Rosario over to cut it off. Very good arm out there. Johnny's on board with the leadoff single. Twins defensively this afternoon. Have Robinson, Hicks, and Rosario in the outfield from left to right. It's Plouffe, Santana, Nunez, and Maurer from third to first. Suzuki behind the plate. Bill Maurer playing first base exclusively now. 80 to start at first base. Has committed four errors. Won three gold gloves as a catcher for the Twins. 08, 09, and 2010. A very good catcher. Catch and throw. Receiver behind the plate. Johnny last night had uh, three hits. Leads off the ball game with a single. Cole hits one out to left field. And boy, you talk about perfect position. That's Shane Robinson. Makes the catch. Well, you wouldn't think he'd be playing there again. Oh. Cole fell on a left handed hitter with good power. Most of his home runs all to right field and right center field. I don't think I've really seen too many left fielders playing Cole there. He's playing that straight up, and all of a sudden, that's a double, if not yeah. more. That's a good swing by Cole. Even though it's caught, don't change anything. Johnny at first base, one out. Here's Trout. Mike went hitless last night. 0 for 4. Three fly ball outs and one double play. He will look at a strike. One thing about Irvin, he didn't really stop a whole lot on that one. When you're in a stretch position, you have to go to a discernible stop. He tried to be quick to the plate. He is susceptible to the stolen base. Two stolen bases in two attempts this year. And Suzuki's had trouble thrown out would-be base there was only a little over 11%. Oh, what? It's fouled back. No ball to two strikes. Santana making his fourth start of the year. 1 0 record of 3.66 ERA. Signed a, a big contract in the offseason, a four year deal. The biggest free agent deal signed forever issued by the Minnesota Twins. And then had to serve an 80 game suspension. Right at the end of spring training, it was announced. Performance enhancing drug that popped up on a test. That's why he's only making his fourth start. 0 2. The slider got him. Two outs. He's a little off that slider. Good break to it. Good tilt. Good swing and miss. So Albert will bat here with two outs and a man at first. The command just over the first three starts for Irvin. Not quite there. Good slider there. 0 no 1 count. There's one start in his career against the Angels. That was a pretty good one, too. Eight strikeouts, to seven and two thirds. Did not go. I was pretty close. And you can steal against Irvin back in 2010. He allowed 36 stolen bases in 44 attempts. The next year, 28 stolen bases in 33 attempts. Angels don't run a lot. 
but it's worth taking that shot. One ball, one strike. Albert, 262 average, 29 home runs, 61 runs batted in. Went one for four yesterday, had an RBI double. Career doubles. It's time for a 21st all time with Bobby Abreu and Charlie Geringer. Tight to a month. Wade Boggs up next at 578. Not sure he's going to get to Tris Speaker at 792. Wow. That's quite a few. Yeah. Irvin with four career pickoffs. He's got an average to slightly above average move to first base. This long throwing motion allows a base seal to get a decent jump against him. Two balls, two strikes. Twins manager Paul Molitor. 11th all time, tied for 11th all time with 605 doubles. 3,300 hits in his career. Well, he can inside out a low fastball and drive it to right center field as well as anybody I've ever seen. Well, Irvin and the Twins think that the Angels might uh, be running. Johnny's feeling real good about himself. He's got one stolen base, been caught once. Full count. It's going to take off on the next pitch now. And you would think his legs are well rested since he's only made two attempts at stolen bases this year. He has. So he's ready to score on the gap right here now from Albert. Mauer plays behind Giabatello. You'd be surprised if he got anything but a slider here. He got a fastball, he rips it to center. Johnny turns, will head to third. So two hits in the inning. The Angels have runners at the corners, and Eric Ibar coming to the plate. Boy, Albert was happy to see a fastball there. Drilled that ball right to center field. Good swing from Albert. A 96 mile an hour fastball right back up the middle. Fastball down. Middle. Real good swing from Albert. One of the hottest angels coming to the plate, Eric Ibard. He's kind of taking a hold of that fifth spot in the order here of late. A 407 batting average in the month of July. Eight runs batted in. On the season, the average up to 289. Plouffe playing in on the grass. And an off-speed pitch low. Halos last night, three for seven with men in scoring position. And if you're Gia Vitelli, you got to be ready to read a slider in the dirt. I like you're going to see a lot of breaking balls to Eric Ibar down and in. Two-zero count. Change up from Urban. And a high fastball there, fouled off, so it's two balls and one strike. Albert takes a big lead, takes off. This one paroled foul. 
Would have had that and stolen. Pretty good jump. Cal even up at two balls, two strikes. CJ Cron on deck. Albert takes off again. And Ibar strikes out, swinging. And the Angels are done here in the first. We'll head to the second with no score. The Carl's Jr. Sports Update. The Yanks try to expand their lead in the AL East. And Price on the hill for the Tigers, maybe for the last time with the trade deadline coming up. Would it surprise you? No, I, I think there's a strong possibility as much as the Tigers still believe they're in it. And they're still certainly in the conversation when it comes to the wild card. That they may make some moves, change the dynamics of that team right now. Miguel Sano, the DH, leading things off for Minnesota. He'll be followed by Trevor Luke and Eddie Rosario. Detroit at the start of the day, ten and a half back of the Royals. That game's tied up in the ninth. Comerica. Sano looks at a strike, one and one. Sano last night 0 for 3, had a couple of walks. Serving as the DH. 304 average. 14 games at the major league level. Highly talented prospect. Got the Twins perhaps see playing third base at some points. Taking some ground balls at first and fly balls on the left. This was fouled back. A lot of power. If you ever get a chance, there's a, a documentary called uh, Pelotero, which means ball player. Down a couple of years ago, and it uh, tells a story of not only Sano but a couple of other players down in the Dominican Republic and the process that they have to go through. Great documentary. This was cut on and missed. It was produced by the executive producer, I should say, Bobby Valentine. And um, Sano's story is interesting in that as the Twins tried to sign him, even though he had the documentation saying he was 16 years old, they had to go through Major League Baseball, had to investigate, had to do bone tests on him to prove his age before the twins can actually sign him and give him the big bonus. But, uh, there's apparently another documentary in the works now and his progress from the minor leagues now up to the big leagues. He's a special talent. There's no questioning yeah. that. Even last night we were talking about his patience at the plate laying off some tough pitches last night. 
you know, a lot of money invested in him. And, you know, of course, had to go through the Tommy John surgery last year. Kloof ahead of the count of two balls, no strikes. Bouncer foul. That's two and one. Trevor hitting 253. 12 home runs, 50 runs batted in. Over four game yesterday with a walk. Had a couple good swings early in the game. Then got a little impatient at the plate, even tried to bunt for the last out of the game, fielded by Houston Street last night. This one lifted in the air to right center. Trout comes in calling for it. Two outs. Fans, this broadcast of Angels Baseball is being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and in ships at sea. We welcome you to our broadcast. As always, we thank you for your continued service to our country. Two up, two down. You know, going back to that bunt, too. Surprised. I think it surprised a lot of folks. Two he, outs, a man at first. I know you're down by three. Yeah, you're trying to bring that tying run into play, but he's got good power. Especially when you even look at this lineup today as far as home run power, he would he has the lead as far as guys in the lineup today. Rosario grounds one over to the right side. Nice stop by diving Johnny Giavatella. And it's a one, two, three inning for Garrett Richards. Good range. He's been working hard with this right now and be able to field his position well with Alfredo Griffin. Good play and he gets up quickly to throw him out at first base. Bottom of the second inning with no score. He'll be followed by Matt Joyce and Carlos Perez facing Irvin Santana. Irvin giving up a couple of singles. Also picking up two strike counts in the first. Carl getting to start at first base with Albert D. Agent. 277 on the year. Five home runs, 18 runs batted in. Pinch hit last night in the eighth inning and. Uh, Struck out. This one's out toward right. Rosario comes in and makes a nice sliding catch. A little sinking liner tailing away from him. There's the first down of the second. We've seen some nice defense by the Twins outfield, especially with their throwing arms. Covering some ground here. Rosario to sliding play. Good jump on that one to be able to cut that one off. It's all about that quick first step to be able to make a play on it. Nice play by Rosario. Matt Joyce, the starting left fielder once again. He pops up the first one. 
Kluf racing toward the railing, runs out of room. When you look at teams that make good plays defensively, it's how they prepare when the pitcher is about to go into the throwing motion, that prep step, whether it's in the infield or even in the outfield. As soon as the baseball is going to be thrown, they're starting to move and be able to react quicker, left or right, depending on where the baseball is hit. It's that preparation gives you that chance to make a very good play. This one's out toward left center field, squared up by Joyce, but Hicks will put it away for out number two. Angel fans, it's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag WestDataStrongBig. Just might see yourself in an upcoming Angels broadcast. It is brought to you by T-Mobile. Two fly ball outs for Santana. Now they'll bring up the catcher, Carlos Perez. Carlos is generally a fly ball pitcher. And we'll give up the big fly. We have 39 home runs back in 2012. And Urban has said before, the home run ball against him is part of his game. Okay, he is a self-proclaimed home run pitcher. That's something that I, I would think as a pitcher. Really don't like to say that too often. I'm sure the late Robin Roberts, Hall of Famer, he used to give up his fair share. Even Burt Blylevin, Hall of Famer, gave up their fair share. But I'm sure they didn't say, you know what, I, I was okay. I was okay with home runs. The old saying is, well, long as they're solo shots. Right. But they're still runs. Yeah. Those 39 bombs he gave up was in his last year with the Angels. Spent one year in Kansas City after that. Last year with the Atlanta Braves. Two balls, two strikes. Not a bad season last year with Atlanta. Had a better year the previous season with the Royals. He can pitch. Yeah, made 31 starts last year. 14-game winner. Had a 3.95 ERA. Good enough to get him a four-year deal. So he still has a good velo on the fastball, 94-95, sharp slider. He's mixing in his changeup more and more as his career progresses. Ground ball back up the middle to two-out single for Carlos. Third hit allowed by Urban. And then will bring up Featherston. Urban, a 17-game winner, 2010 for the Angels. Career high. Twice has won 16 games. 06 and 08. 08 being his lone All Star appearance. <laughs> 96 and 80 as an Angel. Chopper towards short. Santana plays the second big hop. Oh, Force down Perez. And the Angels are done here in the second. We'll head to the third with no score.
7.05. Fans in attendance will receive a Hawaiian shirt courtesy of Total while supplies last. Purchase your tickets by visiting the Angel Stadium ticket office or you can buy them online. Here's a look at the, uh, the shirt. It's a nice shirt. <laughs> yeah. Good number on there. Kingfish. Or the year. He's saying it's Tim Salmon number. No. No. It's Get him. out of here. Yes. It's like the soccer jersey you wore that had 15 on it. <laughs> had nothing to do with the 2015 Women's World Cup. No. It all had to do with Tim Salmon. <laughs> He's going to be in the Angel Hall of Fame. What's it? August 22nd. Put in the Hall of Fame. Along with your guy, Dean Chance. Oh, yeah. And Mike, Mike Witt. Witt. That great curveball Witter used to have. Mike still uh, assisting over there at Santa Margarita High School. Yep. Yep. Bouncer off the leg and it snowballs two strikes. Ran into him a few times when Santa Margarita played Chaminade. Yeah. Yes. How'd Chaminade do? Uh, well, we played well. We gave it our best. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> One eagle beat another eagle. Let's go Eagles. And why wouldn't you? Yeah. Robinson. That's one slowly to the third. Patterson gets rid of it quickly. Boy, Robinson would fly. He got down that line. Nice play by Taylor for the first out. It's that impressive arm strength that Featherston has to make that play. Robertson, like you mentioned, he can get down there quickly. That quick transfer and fired it over to first base for the out. There's Kyle Kibitza called up to the uh, freeze injury last night. Kurt Suzuki behind the plate after the night off last night. Got the start in the opening game of the series. 0 for 2 with a 1. 225 average, three home runs, and 26 RBIs. Two balls, no strikes. Short schedule in Major League Baseball, just 11 games on the slate. High fly ball in the shallow left. Die bar going out, dealing with the sunshine, and gets called off by Joyce at the last second. Two outs. Hit high enough. Madden originally took a step back, and then it came in quickly. And since then, Eric had a tough time tracking that fly ball. Nice job by Matt Joyce to come in and catch that one. We'll bring up Danny Santana. Talked about how uh, well Richards has pitched this year. Better of late, too. He's been very good at home. Six and one. Just a 1.89 ERA prior to today's start. That home ERA is third best in the American League. Behind Dallas Keuchel and Scott Casimir. Casimir now a member of the Houston Astros. So he won't have the friendly yeah, confines of the that Coliseum that anymore. Might be slightly different. Yeah. Pitching in. Minute made as compared to Oakland. One ball, one strike. The Angels, by the way, have very good numbers against Casimir in his career. Still the ball good. well the one time this year. It's a good pickup, though, by the Astros. Yeah. They, they, they mean business this year. There's no questioning that. One and two, and it's a rental. So uh, it, by that, I mean you don't have to pay the uh, the big prices. Um, that a, a non upcoming free agent would tend to uh, really require to uh, get their services. And not only that, Casimir will make uh, a little extra money because he got traded in his free agent year. The Astros cannot make him a qualifying offer. Qualifying offers obviously come with draft pick, draft pick compensation too to the team that signs them, have to give up their draft pick. A little bounce of slowly hit right side. Garrett has it, flips it to first, and they got him. Nine up, nine down for Garrett Richards. He's done a terrific job. Right the bottom of third with no score.
And for Tools of the Trade, brought to you by Ram Trucks, Warren Moon, the Hall of Famer. Thrown out the first pitch today. That arm is still good. A lot of yards thrown the Hall of Famer. Member of the Kansas City Chiefs. I know you love him when he played on the Chiefs, Victor. What a throw from Warren Moon. Texas Santiago catching that pass to the touchdown. Yeah. Spiral. Yes, indeed. All the way to home plate. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you think of quarterbacks and their ability to throw a baseball, like a baseball player, but it, it's, it's the same football motion. Well, the, when, you try, when you try to teach a slider, a lot of times that's what you said, to throw like a football because that creates that cut and slide to yeah. the pitch. I know Kaepernick has a guy that it, they've clocked him at one point or another like 95, 96 miles an hour when he's on the mound. You can tell by his throwing motion with the 49ers it's that way. This one out to center field. Johnny had a single in his first dead bat, a fly ball to center in his second. It's the first out here in the third. John Elway had a pretty good arm. Yeah, oh yeah. Yankee signed him. Pretty interesting um, dynamic during that draft. John out of Stanford. Dan Marino, the Hall of Famer himself, was a second-round draft pick by the Royals. I think it was in 79 or 80. Imagine how hard he threw. Yeah, but he wouldn't have won any championships with you guys. <laughs> too soon? Definitely too soon. I don't, know. I don't know how they didn't win with the Marks brothers. Mark Duper, well, Mark Clayton. Well, they had to stop the opponent from scoring every oh, once well, in a while. That's true. Defense kind of helps. They had the one year, one fantastic year. Was it 84? Yes. I'll tell you what, there wasn't anybody with a quicker release than Dan Marino. No doubt. Warren Moon had a great arm himself yep. and a lot more mobile than Dan Marino was, but what a quick release. Down and in. Cole hit one out to left field in the first inning. He's 0 for 1. Strikes out, swing on that slider. Two outs, third strikeout for Santana to bring up Trout. Oh, speaking of that uh, the slider, that's a nasty one that Irvin has. And he gets in a roll with his slider. He's very comfortable throwing that quite often during the course of the game. 36% of his pitches are sliders. Going to fan graph, so he's not afraid to throw that. Three around 54% fastballs, 10% changeups. Trout looks at a strike. Mike, a strikeout victim in the first. Well, when you look at Urban, though, the home runs he gives up, most of them are on sliders that hang out over the plate. Chase that slider again. Oh, and two. Trout two for five now in his career against Irvin, putting that first inning punch out. And he goes down swinging again. A one, two, three inning for Santana. Four strikeouts. Three in the book, still scoreless.
size of bobblehead tomorrow when the Angels take on the Rangers at 705. For more info and to purchase your tickets, just log on at angels.com slash promotions. promotions. If you're not here at 5 o'clock, you can catch it uh, streaming live on uh, foxsportswest.com. Looking forward to seeing it. Top of the order, Hicks, Nunez, and Maurer. This one's out toward left center field. Trout got a pretty good jump on it. Reaches up, makes the catch. That ball had some carry, too. One down. Boy, well, hit well and run away from Trout as a left-handed batter. It's going to tail away from him. But read well right off the bat by Trout. See how far he had to go. It was that quick first step. Tracks it down, leaps up, and makes an outstanding play. Looked about his defense this year. What he has accomplished, playing a little more shallow and still comfortable either going left to right or going back on the baseball. Nunez grounded out to Ibar in the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. 10 batters up, 10 batters down for Garrett. And that combined with the uh, 15 straight he retired to finish off his start against Boston. He has retired 25 consecutive batters now. Thirty-three pitches thrown. Twenty-two have been strikes. One strikeout. This is out to left field. Joyce. A couple of steps. Two outs. It'll bring up Mauer. Joe grounded out to Giavatella. In the first so far in this game for Richards, six ground ball outs, four fly ball outs, and one punch out. Leaving up the count. Mariners and Tigers still playing at Comerica. Tenth inning. 2 2 game. David Price got the start in that one. Toronto leading Oakland 2 0. The only uh, two other games that are going on right now. Two balls, one strike. Oakland had a walk off. Davis with an infield hit last night against Toronto. Two-two. Elevated fastball there from Garrett. Very little breeze blowing here. And while it may be a warm afternoon, it's certainly not as muggy as we have saw it earlier this uh, home stand. And the rain we saw. Yeah. Historic rain. 2 2. That is shot past Featherston. Good piece of hitting down the line. Joyce cuts it off and then goes into the wall. Mauer easily in there with a two out double. First base runner of the game allowed by Garrett. Big dangerous slide into that wall for Matt Joyce. That's the swing that Maurer has perfected throughout his career. It's going the other way. And Featherson well off the base at third. 19th double of the season for Maurer. One of those plays, too, sometimes as a left fielder, you just try to play it to carry him around there to be able to cut it off towards that foul pole. So now looks at a breaking ball for a strike. 
Only strikeout that Garrett has picked up was up Sano in the first in the second part, leading off the second. Good velo going today. Location's been really good. And 27 strikes of his 41 pitches thrown. Handles in the bottom of the fourth have Pujols, Ibar, and Crone do up. Urban Santana starting to settle in. One, two, three, third inning, including a couple of strikeouts. Two one. Off the end of the bad foul. He throws to no another breaking ball. Yeah, just try to expand the zone. That being said, you have to be ready for a fly ball your way if you're Cole Calhoun. Fastball. That's ball. I thought it's ball three, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Full count. All you can do is smile at that point. You know the fellows in the dugout are going to say something to you at some point. Oh, no doubt. Something to the effect of, you know, in the big leagues, we use it's four <laughs> balls to take a walk, not this is the minor leagues. Which, by the way, is still four balls in the minor leagues, too. <laughs> Payoff on the way. He wanted appealing, did not go. Missed below the strike zone. For a two out walk. We'll bring up Plouffe with two men on. Blue for fly ball to try the second in. Go for one. Mauer at second, Sano at first. Bouncer foul. One thing you try to look for from the stretch position from Richards compared to the full windup is the velocity difference. And so far, pretty much keeps it at that same 95, 96 range, maybe even potentially 97. And obviously, you'll see in big situations, pitchers. Starting pitchers love to go to that full windup because you can get more behind that because you can use that leverage to drive off the pitch and rubber to be more effective with your pitches. Well, that ball bounced a foot and a half in front of home plate. Nice block by Perez. These two have worked very well together. Carlos Perez and Garrett Richards had many a conversation with Garrett about that. So he's very comfortable with the game plan they have to start the game. Very little shake off as far as pitch selection by Carlos during the course of the game. This one's out to deep left field. Joyce racing back, and that is gone into the Twins' bullpen. A three run home run on a one two pitch. And Minnesota leads it three to nothing. And that was a breaking ball that stayed on the inner half of the plate. The right pitch, wrong location. Because of that being 87 on the inner half, it kind of speeds up the bat of Trevor Plouffe. And the one guy in this lineup with the power has hit a three-run home run. His 13th of the season. 
You know, that this breaks on the inner half. That's almost like a changeup that's running in because of the speed of that pitch as compared to his normal cut fastball. Very hittable pitch. And Plouffe did not miss that one, especially here in the day. And a bond attempt here by Rosario, barehanded by Featherston. And Rosario is gunned down by Taylor for the third out. But a two-out rally, double, walk and a home run gives the Twins a 3-0 lead. Now he's got himself a 3 nothing lead. Irvin coming off a 1-2-3 uh, third inning in which he struck out a couple of batters in that frame. And the slider's uh, been very, very good for him so yeah, far. And just like we said with Irvin, when he gives up a home run, it's generally going to be a slider. Same thing with Garrett. That slider backed up instead of going down and away. It backed up to Trevor Ploof and he was able to hit a three-run home run. Now you got a tough task going against Irvin because his slider is really working early on. Yeah, he's fooled Mike Trout a couple of times on that slider. He'll face Pujol, Sidebar, and Crone here in the bottom of the fourth inning. This is the second time on this homestand that the Angels have trailed at any point in the game. The first time was last night. That was when uh, Minnesota scored twice in the third inning. Take a 2-1 lead. Albert a single. The first, so he's one for one. Shift is on with Albert at the plate. Nunez, second baseman, almost took straight up the middle. And the sky down to shallow center. Hicks broke back, now has to come racing in. Still coming on, and he'll make the catch. One out. Fortunate enough, that baseball stayed up there a long time. Yeah. He had to track some serious ground. Here's Ibar. Strikeout victim in the first. This one down the line, played by Maurer. And there are two outs, two very quick outs. So Crone will bat. Two outs, the base is clear. CJ 0 for one. Nice play out in the right field by Rosario. On a sinking liner.
Irvin had a couple of no decisions in his first two starts of the year at Kansas City and then at home against the Tigers. Defeated Oakland on the 17th. The only one the Twins have had on this road trip. Two balls, one strike. Seven and two thirds, and now we give up no runs. Allowed just five hits. He's given up three hits so far today. He could throw that slider at any point in the count and throw it for a strike. Full count. And when you throw a 2 1 slider, more likely we'll see a 3 2 slider here. He tried a fastball upstairs against Chrome, but was too far out of the strike zone. This one out toward right center field. Hicks moving back to his left. Oh, just got in on the hands enough. Hicks makes the catch. And that seventh straight retired by Santana. Four complete, three nothing Minnesota. Highway miles per gallon. This car was made for driving in California. Visit Dodge.com. By AT&T Uverse. More live channels on the go than cable. And by Subaru. Test drive the all-new 2015 Subaru Forester. Or go to Subaru.com to learn more. It's the bottom third of the order coming up for Minnesota as we start the fifth inning. Trevor Plouffe for the three-run blast, giving the Twins a 3-0 lead. Two-out rally. Started by the Mauer double, and then the walk to Sano. And a mistake pitch by Garrett on a 1 2 count. Poof, didn't miss it. So it's Robinson, Suzuki, and Santana here in the fifth. Robinson 0 for 1. He grounded out to Featherston. Slowly hit ball. Feathers, first time up. Featherston's made a couple real good plays at third base. Two balls, two strikes. No Brian Dozier, no Torrey Hunter to start this ball game for Minnesota. Change the lineup around. Hicks batting the leadoff spot for the first time this year. And 
way Irvin Santana's thrown the ball so far in this game, very important for Garrett. Put up some zeros to see if the offense can get rolling at some point against Irvin. Called strike three. Robinson goes down looking for the first down. Second strike down for Garrett. This copyrighted right telecast is presented by Authority of the Los Angeles Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. Robinson didn't like the call. Slow walk back to the dugout. And here's Kurt Suzuki. The fly ball to left in his first at bat. Successful, wicked as it seems. That cut fastball slider has been solid. Just really one mistake. And that was a Trevor Plouffe slider that backed up on Garrett. Other than that, his stuff has been very, very good today. Looking for some offense, though. Ground ball left side toward the hole, and that's a base hit for Kurt Suzuki. Pitches it uh, too much of the plate, perhaps on an 0 2 count. Especially with a veteran hitter, all he's trying to do is put the ball in play. Santana hit a little dribbler up the first base line at his first down bat. Bounces this one to second. Should be two, four, six, three. It is. Inning ending double play. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. The bottom third of the order for the Angels coming up down 3 0. Finale of this three game series. The Angels came into uh, today's action with a seven game winning streak. Holding on to a two game lead in the American League West. Houston and Boston will play later on today. Texas is idle. Oakland losing currently to Toronto. And Seattle and Detroit headed to the 11th inning in Comerica. Irvin, 46 pitches, four strikeouts, no walks. He's allowed three hits. Matt Joyce went through the first one. Joyce 0 for 1. 
Lined one out to Hicks. His first at bat in the second inning. And a six for 18 coming in the game against Santana for Matt Joyce with two home runs. Went around 0 2. I think this thing with Matt Joyce now is snowballed to the point that it doesn't matter who's on the mound and whatever success he has had. That is downstairs. Because it tends to happen sometimes. It just, you, you can't get into a, a stretch of five, six, seven, eight games of swinging the bat well so that you can get your confidence back up. And hitting's all about that. You chase pitches out of the strike zone. You want to put yourself in fastball counts, and you end up chasing sliders and curveballs out of the strike zone. Hitting is all about having confidence and timing at the plate. And when your timing is not there and your confidence isn't there, you're looking for one pitch and you miss that one pitch, or you don't square up the one pitch you, you're looking for. All of a sudden, you start doubting what you're going to try to do the rest of that sequence against uh, any pitcher at this point. And to your point about uh, Matt having some success against Irvin Santana, it has gotten to the point where once at the plate, Seems like Joyce is thinking about everything else but locking in on the guy who's had success on. Yeah, that, that's, that should help you out when you get to the plate. Right. Even if you're not swinging the bat well, you, okay, at least I feel good against this pitcher on the mound. This one's kind of shallow center field. Nunez going out. The second baseman is there and makes the catch. Two outs. Fans, tomorrow make your plans. Visit the Game 1 Music Garden for a pregame luau featuring live Hawaiian music, dancing, and food. Purchase your tickets today at the Stadium Box Office or you can do it online. Irvin's retired nine straight since the single by Carlos Perez in the second. Featherston coming up now, 0 for 1. O2 count. Fifth 0 2 count for Santana this afternoon. Fourth start of the year. And Taylor goes down swinging, and the Angels go down in order. So make that 10 straight. Retired by Santana. We head to the sixth. Minnesota still on top. Urban Santana has been dynamic so far with his sliders. Change up and solve fastball, very good. A lot of swing and miss, especially the heart of the order. And this one mistake, well, Garrett Richards, the difference in this ballgame. Trevor Plouffe, a three-run home run, his 13th home run of the season. 
Other than that, Garrett Richards has thrown the ball well himself, but Plouf made a pay for that one mistake. Irvin has made it hold up. Garrett back to work to face the top of the order here at Hicks, Nunez, and Maurer. Aaron Hicks 0 for 2. The ground down the fly ball to center. Long Beach Natum, Woodrow Wilson High School. Product of the MLB Urban Youth Academy in Compton. A talented center fielder. Great arm, yeah. Quick bat. Switch hitter with speed. Shows Bunt. Bunt's a foul. It's one and two. When you get Buxton back, if you're the Twins, that's a lot of speed in the outfield. Breaking ball, bouncer back to the mound. Here, drops it for a second, picks it up. Hicks retired for the first out. Here's Nunez. Both teams with three hits. One of those three from Minnesota. A big one, three run shot. It was in the fourth inning. I was talking to Paul Molitor about Byron Buxton, the prize young player who's on the disabled list right now. He's he's really impressed with his talent and what he can do, his speed he has, where he can run the bases, put the ball in play, solid defender himself in the outfield. Handles to see him, I'm sure, and he's healthy and ready to go in September. The Angels. For the target field for a four game series. Bouncer back to the mound. A missile the first two outs. And that's what you want to do as a pitcher. When you feel a ground ball like that, you stay low like an infielder would and throw from that arm angle. It's a very athletic. Arm angle to throw from when you feel the ball as a pitcher when it's a slow roller in front of you. A lot of pitchers will feel that stand straight up and then they're going to throw that hard sinker to the first baseman. So emulate an athlete is what you're saying. Exactly. Especially when you see your, your infielders, what they do when they throw to the bases. <laughs> Here's Maurer. <laughs> you had to get that in there, didn't you? Mauer started off the <laughs> rally in the fourth inning with a double down the left field line. Just because you know they're the true athletes. <laughs> 19th double of the year for Mauer. I'm sorry, did you say something? Your mic cut out. <laughs> Good fastball, one and one. We should get down and talk to Warren Moon and ask him if he was a pitcher at one point. I'm sure he was. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Pat Sajak was here last night. Warren Moon today. Pat, a huge uh, baseball fan. Chicago guy, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Hottest team in baseball right now, the Angels. So he's front running, is that what you're saying? No. Prone to the back end. This is smart man. One, two, three, go the Twins. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the order coming up for the Angels. She have a tele Calhoun and Trout.
no decision. Eight solid innings for the Tigers. And the Bronx Bombers do it again against Baltimore. They crush the baseball. It's Kobe Ellsbury with a big game himself, including this big fly against the Menace way out to right center field. Yankee Stadium. Ellsbury was three for four with four RBI, including that home run as the Yankees sweep Baltimore. Now the Yankees are up in that division by five and a half games, depending on how the Toronto game ends up in Oakland. Santana's retired 10 straight. Jim Attella one for two, single in the first, a fly ball to center. That was in the third inning. Handles had a couple of men on base in the first inning, first and third. And Ibar struck out. It's as close as they've come to scoring this afternoon. Oh, with two now. Boy, has that slider been sharp. He really has a mislocation with that slider yet today. Just 58 pitches thrown for Urban here into the sixth inning. And down goes Giovatello. Another strikeout. Angel hitters just uh, unable to lay off of it. Seven strikeouts this afternoon. No walks. The three hits allowed. Talk about that as far as the go tos to be successful against us. Don't be over aggressive on the slider. So far, the Angel hitters have been. He's thrown enough of them for strikes, and then he expands the strike zone out of the zone with that sharp slider. Cole, a line out to left field and a strikeout in the third. Well, Irwin has faced 20 batters in this game. 17 first pitch strikes. That is looped towards second and glove by a leaping Edward Nunez. Terrific play. Eduardo timing that perfectly. Yeah, off the bat, you thought for sure that was going to fall in nicely into the outfield for a hit. But the timing and the hops way up there. And a great play on that one. Irvin showing his appreciation for a great defensive play behind him. Base is clear for Trout. Michael for two with a couple of strikeouts. So far for Urban against Travis. Fastballs in, sliders away. He's got that one up to 95. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball to the left side. That'll sneak through for a base hit. One with a 2-2 slider. The Angels have a man on for Albert. Upstairs enough to put that ball in play for Trout. I was surprised he went with a slider there. Even though he struck him out twice on sliders, he's gotten fastballs by him. And this slider kind of spins out over the plate. And Trout, towards the end of the bat, gets that ball through the hole between short and third. Kind of sped up his bat there because he's had a good fastball against Trout today. Albert a one for two game with a single.
way outside. Certainly, it's been a while since Irvin's been pitching out of the stretch. See if Albert can capitalize on that. A mistake here. One oh pitch. Let's strike. They call on the right side with the Nunez playing up the middle. Rosario playing shallow and right. Good throwing arm for Rosario. Irvin had retired 12 straight before that base hit by Trout. Ground ball toward short. Santana bobbles it. Albert stopped running, so he is thrown out at first. That'll do it for the Angels. Well, end of the seventh, it's a three-nothing Twins lead. Angels baseball is brought to you by Mercury Insurance on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com to get a fast free quote and see how much you can save. And by Hyundai. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Halo's down 3 0 as we start the seventh here at the Big A, the uh, finale of this three game set. Sano, Plouffe, and Rosario. To face Garrett Richards, had himself a one, two, three, six inning. Snow had that big at bat last time. Worked the walk. He laid off a pretty tough slider on the three-two pitch. Oh, for one today with that walk. Irvin has uh, quality pitches throughout. He's needed to. One ball, no strikes. Very close to being a strike there. Yes, he got a lot of the lower part of the strike zone. Good one. It's the uh, Rangers already in town. Three game set beginning tomorrow night. 7:05 tomorrow, 6:05 on Saturday, 12:35 on Sunday. The Angels still don't know who's going to start the game tomorrow. So no, it's went out toward right center. It's playable for Trout. Kobe Lewis on the mound for Texas. Giovanni Gallardo 
Hector Santiago on Saturday and Nick Martinez and Andrew Heaney on Sunday afternoon. Well, Nick Martinez started off so hot for the Rangers, then was sent down, now back up. Well, the Angels with a lot of success against Colby Lewis. Especially over the last couple of years. Blew for one for two game with that home run. 13th of the year now at 53 RBIs. One ball and strike. Texas defeated uh, Colorado last night. Rangers at 45 and 49 on the year. The start of the day, nine back. Off the end of the bat foul. Red Sox and Astros playing a night game tonight. In Houston. Getaway day. The Boston will take off tomorrow morning. There's a called strike three, two outs. That's still stunning. That they're, that they're taking off tomorrow morning? <laughs> yes. Now let's take a look at what the difference between pitching from the full one of Garrett Richards is compared to on the left, is compared to the stretch position on the right, especially with a slider. It's pretty close to the same arm angle, but because of that is stretchy, a little bit quicker. And that way you're more apt to make a mistake or two. That's the one mistake he made on the one on the right to Trevor Plouffe, the slider he hit out. With no one on base, hitters are hitting this 216 against Garrett with runners on 256. You got to make sure you stay back a little bit longer in a stretch position. You have a tendency to drift forward, full windup. You can stay back much easier. Rosario tried to bunt his way on in the fourth inning. That's part of the things like Vic Rosario, where you see a lot of young pitchers now. We've seen basically almost go from the modified stretch position from the get-go, even with no one on base, to be able to maintain and keep their same mechanics from the stretch position and, and consider their full windup. Sorry, goes down swinging. Perez will throw down to first to complete the strikeout. And a one, two, three, seven. Stretch time here at the Big A. The Angels trying to figure out Urban Santana trailing at three nothing. Coming schedule. We just talked about the Rangers in town for three and uh, three different start times 705, 605, 105. Angels live, of course, 30 minutes prior to uh, start time. We'll kick things off. Zarek Ibar leads things off here in the bottom of the seventh. 
back to the 6 o'clock game on Saturday nights now. Fireworks spectacular. Oh, yeah. The Angels uh, start a, a six-game road trip. Three in Houston, getting Tuesday, and three against the Dodgers a week from Friday at Dodger Stadium. It's a big stretch of games on the road. Goes back at home for a week and against Cleveland at Baltimore. High bar skies one left side. Blue's coming down the line, takes charge. One out. Eric O for three. Credit Urban, he's throwing the ball exceptionally well. He hasn't been behind the count too often. Even at that point, he was. He went upstairs. With a fastball still at 93, so good velo still in this game into the seventh inning, but only 72 pitches thrown for Urban Santana. Crowing 0 for 2 with a fly ball to right and a fly ball to center. That's when you know you've got it working where you've got hitters taking fastballs down the pipe and swinging at your breaking ball. And Urban has mixed it up well today as this one's rolled over to third. Kind of kept hitters completely baffled this afternoon. The thing you do against that slider is thinking turn to hit the ball the other way if you're a right handed bat. If you try to pull that, even if you make any contact, you're going to roll over, hit a ground ball to third or short. Yeah. He certainly has had that working. 55 strikes of his 76 pitches thrown. Fourth start of the year for Irvin. Trying to snap the Twins' four game losing streak as Joyce takes a fastball for a strike. Matt over two. And then the last time up. Joy saw after the fastball, the number of sliders down and in. And a nice change up there. And then the shift being put on now with Pluth moving over to the second base side of the base on an 0-2 count. That hits Joyce. A two out hit by pitch. Overthrown slider by Santana. Especially the hitter, although you never want to get hit with a baseball when you're behind the count 0 2. Trying to get on base any way you can. It looked like he was really going to try to make his way out of the, out of the way of that baseball. So two outs and a man on. And it's Carlos Perez. One for two. He's singled back in the second. One of four hits for the Angels. And you wonder if Carlos gets on here, if maybe Kyle Kibitza will grab it back potentially. Time was called prior to the pitch. Featherston on deck. Just once in this game, the Angels have had uh, two base runners on board. And that was the first. That is out toward right field. Rosario moving back on him is there. And we are through seven here at the big A. Minnesota maintaining their three nothing lead.
are trailing top of the eight three nothing to the twins on Patrick O'Neill stick around after the game for Angels live Tim Salmon Jose Moda perhaps they can explain what's going on with the Angels offense or is it all just Irvin Santana Alex Curry will get the interviews as well now I spoke with some of the guys in the bullpen I talked to Fernando Salas and Cesar Ramos about day games or night games. Which do they prefer? Salas told me he prefers day games because he has the feeling that the hitter perhaps is a bit sluggish on the day games. Uh, I'll bring it in to, to Victor and, and Mark right now. Gooby, did you feel you had an advantage on the day games? And also, what do you think? Is it the home team that perhaps in their own bed they wake up not ready ready to play? Thanks a lot, Patrick. Yeah, yeah I think when you think about it, I, as a pitcher, I love pitching in day games because I always felt it was more difficult with the glare for hitters to read and the difference in the spin of the baseball, whether it's a slider or fastball. So I always like day games myself. I know hitters at certain ballparks, they always felt like here at the Big A, up in Oakland, the baseball would carry better. But I always thought I was at an advantage, especially with the spin on my sliders compared to my fastball. O2 count on Robinson. He felt that he may have called time, but Rob Drake didn't give it to him. That's one and two. That's why it took a little while. You know, getting ready prior to that pitch. Bottom third of the order Robinson, Suzuki, and Santana. Garrett's retired seventh straight. This is into center field, a leadoff single. Might see him running early, or at the very least, some sort of hit and run put on by Paul Molitor with Suzuki, who handles the bat well at the plate now for Minnesota. Suzuki with a single in his last at bat, a one for two game. Four stolen bases on the year. Robinson has been caught once. First time in this game that the, the Twins have had their leadoff man reach. Robinson off to a huge lead already. Eighty six pitches for Garrett fifty nine have been strikes. Thrown the ball well all afternoon just one pitch he'd like to have back. It's a big lead. Started to go then stops now third to first and Robinson gets back in there. No one count on Kurt Suzuki. Garrett pretty quick to the plate he's only allowed two stolen base in five attempts. So far this year, Perez has thrown out 23% of would be base dealers, almost 24%. There goes Robinson, the pitch off the glove of Perez, and it's a stolen base. Trying to be super quick on the transfer, but because of that pitch, in mean, a cut fastball off the plate, difficult to catch and throw. A little cut fastball, unable to maintain control of the baseball with the transfer either. Count even up at one ball, one strike. Saying 10 on deck. See Suzuki trying to shoot it to the opposite side. Seattle has scored a run in the 12th inning at Comerica. They lead it 3 2, still batting in the 12th. 
Toronto leading Oakland 5 to 2. One final, the Yankees over Baltimore 9 3. Two balls, two strikes. Baltimore now seven back in the East. Toronto second and five and a half back. Tampa Bay six back. Baltimore rumored to be trying to get a bat themselves. Not many clubs are in the market necessarily to get a bat. It's more arms at this point. And Baltimore looking maybe even Justin Upton from San Diego. Full count. Yankees, by the way, swept Baltimore in the series. White Sox should be at Cleveland later. Boston at Houston. Kansas City at St. Louis. And a walk. Second one issued by Garrett. But it's two men on with nobody out. Sacrifice situation, I imagine, coming up now. Santana coming to the plate. Good bunner also with pretty good speed. Six sacrifice bunts so far this year for Santana. Mike Moore and first man up. Richards at 92 pitches now. Three runs in the fourth inning for Minnesota on the Plouffe home run. It's been all the scoring so far. Nobody out here in the eighth. Crone in on the grass. First base. Featherston even with the cut of the grass. Over at third. There's a butt. Perez calls off Crone. The sacrifice works. Robinson ends up at third base. Suzuki at second, and there's one out. That now seven sacrifice bunts for Santana. Get the high fives as he gets back in that dugout for the Twins. Force in the infield in now. A little walk. Kicks to load up the bases. Tinsa Ramos now also getting ready. That'd be to uh, face Mauer. Hicks 0 for 3. We'll draw the attention of Walk here to load him up. And there's ball four. Union is only grounded into one double play this year. Mike Butcher is going to come out. Conversation with Butcher and enabled the bullpen certainly to be ready to go, especially with Mauer coming up next. Also, you may be in a situation where you'll see a quick throw to third base to try to pick off Robertson at some point during this at bat. Nugent is at 0 for 3 games so far. Pops it up. The infield fly roll. Swinging at the first pitch. Giavatella underneath it. Two down. Huge out.
Brings up Maurer. He's one for three. Doubled and scored in the fourth inning. Robinson standing at third. Suzuki at second. And Hicks over at first. Ramos now stops loosening. Moore continues. First one in there, first strike. When you're looking, you think, okay, Ramos is up. Why is he not facing lefty versus lefty? Mauer's batting average this year against lefties is actually higher. 283 against left handed pitching as compared to 274 against right handed pitching. Ground ball toward first foul. O2 oh, Callum Bauer. No place to put him. Trying to keep this a three run deficit. Does it nine, one and two coming up at the bottom of the eighth? Curveball. Didn't throw many curveballs. It's a field pitch for him. He was real quick on his front shoulder, trying to stay on top of his curveball. Did not stay back long enough on that pitch as compared to his slider. Swing and a miss. Bauer goes down swinging. Perez throws to Crone, and the bases will remain loaded. No damage. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. The Angels down 3 0. Strongest fan voted a hashtag West Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. 9 1 and 2 for the Angels. Kyle Kubitz with a pinch hit here for Taylor Featherstone to lead things off. It'll be followed by Johnny Giavatella and then Cole Calhoun. Nice job by Garrett to get out of that uh, bases loaded one out situation with no damage. Yeah, eight strong innings again for Garrett coming back from a nine inning shutout last time out. The innings that Mike Sosha needed today. Kyle called up today, replacing David Freeze on the roster. Freeze placed on the 15 day disabled list with a uh, broken bone in his right middle finger. He is in the hole at no balls and two strikes. Santana's thrown 83 pitches, seven strikeouts. 
both pitchers deep in the game with not a lot of pitches thrown. There's the one-two. That's down and in. Two balls, two strikes. Kyle was in at 276 at AAA. Pulls this one into the glove of Joe Maurer. Ripped. But it's the first down here in the eighth. Said he's pretty tall. He needed that height to be able to catch that line drive by Kibitza. In perfect position. He jumps up and makes a play on that line drive. Giavatella, one for three game. Warren will work the ninth. Barring, of course, the Angels scoring runs here. Seeing that. Two one on the way. Johnny shoots one down the right field line. Long run for Rosario. He's there. Makes the catch. Shading him that way. Two outs. He's made a couple real good plays in right field. Yeah, he might be the worst two in left field to start the series. A couple of hard hit baseballs here against Santana, but nothing to show for. Cole will step up. And Urban has seven career shutouts, 14 career complete games. Short. Halos go down quietly here in the eighth. We head to the ninth. It's three nothing Minnesota. If you buy Arco back in the fourth inning with two on, two out, a slider backed up on Garrett Richards and Trevor Plouffe. A three-run home run to all the scoring in the game on that one swing by Plouffe. Richards threw the ball very well, but Plouffe capitalized on that one mistake. 
So no Plouf and Rosario here in the ninth inning. New pitcher on for the Angels. As Mike Morin takes over for Garrett Richards. So in and out, who's in, who's out? Morin his last outing threw the ball very well. 26th game, 101 record, a 698 ERA. Well, his changeup was excellent. That changeup he threw to Napoli that last time out was unbelievable. Richards, eight innings, four hits, including the home run to Plouffe, five strikeouts, three walks, one was intentional, and the three runs. As Sano looks at a strike. Twins DH is 0 for 2 with a strikeout, a walk, and a fly ball to center. Good changeup. This is. And it's 1 and 1. 36,000, 134 here in the finale of this three game set. One and two. 71 mile an hour changeup. Throw another one. He evens up the count on two balls, two strikes. Well, you think you'd try a fastball upstairs, but I still think a fastball on the outside corner at the knees would, even, would be more effective. Count still at two and two. Kyle Kabitza stays in the game, plays third. No other changes for the Angels. Halos in the bottom of the ninth have uh, Trout, Pujols, and Ibar do up. Like Glenn Perkins getting ready. Sano goes down swinging for the first out. Did indeed go with the fastball and got it by him at 95. Mike Warren. Boy, at this point, even though Perkins has been great closing games, you almost rather see him and have Irvin go back out yeah. there for the ninth. Considering the way Irvin's thrown the ball all afternoon. Blue for one for three game with that home run in the fourth. Oh, it's two. Fastball got him. Just blew it right by him. Two outs. Is that a 94 Monar fastball to get it by Fluke and 95 to get it by Snow? So Rosario steps in now. Perkins loosening like he's coming into the game. This one's fouled off. So he may have seen the last of uh, Urban Santana. Twins trying to snap a four game losing streak. Seattle, by the way, hung on in 12 innings to beat the Tigers 3 to 2. Good changeup. 0 oh, 2. Toronto leading. Oakland five to two. Getting late at the Coliseum. Here it's three nothing Minnesota. This one out to shallow right field. Cole will play this one on a hop. Trying to go to second. And Rosario is safe at second. Now it goes a double. 
take a little time to see if they're going to check that one out. The hesitation, then the throw. See if the foot got in. It looked like he got him. Well, Mike Sosha's not going to challenge him. Well, the foot beats it there, but then the foot, it's off the base. Yeah, the foot is off the base. I mean, unless his hand is back on the base. I mean, that tag looked like it stayed on. It looks like Mike Sosha at this point will now yeah. check at it. I mean, the foot got there first, but then the contact of, of the foot on the base went, went off the base. And if the tag is still applied, he's, he's going to be out. I wonder why they're all getting together here. Cole charging that doesn't see the runner going at that point. He looked like sorry, Gubbe. It looked like he was waiting for Rosario to commit, as opposed to just getting the baseball yeah, back just in. Get it in there as quick as possible, keeping it first base. I'm trying to figure out the conversation here. Now I know Mike waved off the challenge, but the play hadn't resumed yet, so he still could go on and challenge. I don't know if I mean, right there you could see at every angle that that, that foot. Is off the base now. It's a matter of was the, the glove still on the body before he got his hand back on the base is the question. Well, they are going to look at that play. There's a manager's challenge. Question is if they're an angle that allows them to see uh, where the hand is in relation to the tag as that foot kind of comes off the base. Or it'll get some pitches here. Well, again, you can see the foot right there is on the base, but then it's the contact is is gone now as far as the foot on the base. Now is that glove still on the leg before the hand reaches back and touches and keeps contact with the base? Credit Joe West. I mean, he's right there. And he waited a while just to make sure that it looked like, but he doesn't have an angle right there necessarily to see if the glove is still on the body before the hand. I don't know, Gibby. On that slide there, that 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 angle looked like the hand was still up in the air. It looks like the glove is on the leg. But as we've seen uh, time and time again, what we see here doesn't necessarily mean that. That's how things will get ruled. The call on the field is safe at second, and it's a double right now for Rosario with two outs. See Joe right there in position. I think it, I think they got to call him out. Should be, but uh, we'll see. Taking off the headsets and out at second, so the challenge works. That's the third out of the inning. We were thinking that was the call right away. It took a while for Mike Sosha to go out there and he got the call right. Well, at the bottom of the ninth, the Angels down by three. Have Trout, Pujols, and Ivar coming up.
particular eight innings against the Angels, and that's it. He's not going to come back out for the ninth inning, making just his fourth start of the season after serving an 80 game suspension to start the year. And it's the closer for the Twins, Glenn Perkins, on a relief, 40th game, 28 saves. He had a blown save his last time out, and that was on July 18th. Yeah, good fastball from Perkins. He's 91 to 96 range as slider, very good slider. Throws quite a few of them. A lot of strikes, too, for Perkins. Been very, very effective for the All-Star. Irvin went a season high, eight innings, four hits, seven strikeouts, no walks. Trout one for three, singled in the sixth inning. Perkins, originally a starter. Since converting to the bullpen, he's not afraid. He comes right after guys. Throws a lot of strikes, challenges hitter. Oh, and two. Trout hits one out the center. Hicks is there. One down. <laughs> Albert one for eight in his career against Perkins. Is that a one for three game today? Oh, what? Upstairs. 94 mile per hour fastball. Well, he had two very good starting pitchers out there today, both throwing strikes. These games are usually decided by one mistake. And uh, today was Garrett making the one mistake to Plouffe. Credit Trevor Plouffe did not miss it on a 1 2 count, a three run blast. We talked about both these guys on the mound today with great sliders. Yeah, and then when you make a mistake with a slider, not too many of them throughout this entire game by either pitcher, starting pitcher. But Plouffe took advantage of the one. Very solid outing by Garrett Richards. Urban Santana was fantastic today. Two, two, and that's down the line. Hooking foul. <laughs> Cued up the line. That is just foul. Well, it's an English on him. Or in this case, with Albert, a little Spanish as well. And you never know the way the ball rolls down the line if it's going to roll back in fair territory either. Full count. High bar on deck. Albert gets jammed, pops it up. Joe Maurer calling for it. Two outs here in the ninth. Well, the Angels have been shut out five times this year. Just once, though, at home. And that was back on May 26 versus the Padres. He's trying to get some guys on base. It's a very well-pitched game by Minnesota against the Angels today, considering how well the offense has been going. Yeah. Hey, just one of those games they ran into a pitcher that um, had great stuff 
Ibar looks at the strike. They had a chance in the first inning. Maybe scratch out a run, maybe two, but uh, that was it. The only time in this game the Angels had multiple base runners. The first. Oh, one. Downstairs, evens the count. Eric 0 for 3 with a strikeout, ground down in a pop up. This one's out toward right center field, giving it a ride. Hicks, a long run toward the track. He will haul it in, and the Twins take the finale of this three game set by shutting out the Angels 3 0. And that's not an easy thing to do, but Urban Santana was excellent. Perkins picks up his 29th save. The big swing of the game by Trevor Plouffe. A three run home run on a slider from Garrett Richards, who falls in now 10 and 7, but a solid game by Garrett. Just, just a well pitched game. Good defense behind him. They both do a lot of strikes, and the defense was ready to make the plays. Halo's seven game winning streak comes to an end. They'll try to start a new one tomorrow night with the Texas Rangers and the first of three here at the Big A. Stick around, Angels Live post game. Coming up next.